<sighs> Hello and welcome to Q&A Friday. <sighs> it's Q&A, Q&A Friday. All right, Finn. Sit over here if you want and give me cuddles. He's sitting the other side of the city, just staring at me. It's weird. Oh, now he's cuddling. Now he's he's laying down next to me for cuddle. Um. Yeah, I took him for a walk earlier, and he got muddy, and he had the. Uh, I don't even want to what to call it the the. The zoomies, I think they call it. It was running between the living room and the bedroom and jumping on a bed, then jumping on a settee and just like all over the place. And he kept barking. Oops. Like, Wah! every now and then. You cutie, aren't you? And uh, he was really just, I didn't know if he was, got some mud in his feet that was, uncomfortable for him because he was also like doing the digging thing as well so I gave him a bath and I couldn't catch him couldn't catch him so I had to put the lead on so he thought he was, he was going somewhere even though we'd only just got back we had a nice hour we had a nice hour out didn't we yeah this was this morning or this afternoon And after he had a bath, he was all right. I cleaned his feet. It wasn't a bath, it was a shower, but it was in the bath. And it's kind of, kind of had to do it really. It's all right, don't worry, blimey. So only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Yes, yeah, let me boy to sleep. My name's Jason Newland. So before I do the questions, uh, there's not many questions to answer today. Uh, I'm not quite sure why I didn't. I'm not sure why, but there's only, I think, three questions. If I'm correct. So I did a recording yesterday called Caring for Others. Uh, uploaded it today. It was for Cara. Cara sent me a message and I just uh, did that recording for her in mind. But also for anyone else that's caring for other people whether it's emotionally or even, you know, just, it's a very broad recording. Um, I did focus more on kind of mental health issues rather than anything else, including like addiction and stuff. But I was just talking from my own personal experience. So like helping, trying to help someone else. It might be an absolute pile of poo, to be fair. It might be useful. I don't know. It's kind of... I, I never really know, to be honest with you, when I do a recording, if it's of any use. But my intentions were in the right place, I guess. So... It's been a much better day today for me. I had... Ugh. I had three days in a row that were quite difficult just from my mood perspective I don't want to talk too much about it but Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday I had a bit of a headache especially on Wednesday and Thursday uh, I've got people continuously asking me to lend them money I've literally had three different people ask to borrow money off me this week alone. Yesterday, 
I was asked four times by do two different people between two different people so two times each to lend them money it's just like yeah it, it's it gets to me a little bit because I, I I made a rule when my friend passed away last year my rule was never ever going to lend anyone money again because I've done that and people don't pay it back and well not, not always but and I kind of made that rule I don't have to do that anymore and then straight away I had I think three people borrow money off me within about a week it's just like ridiculous and yeah it was uh, and didn't pay it back of course so it was put me in a bit of a bad mood but then I was just, and I've, I'm struggling a little bit with a university course. Don't worry, this isn't not going to be a big negative recording. I'm just just letting you know what's going on. Not quite sure what to do with the old uh, university course. I'm kind of conflicted between struggling to get motivated to do it. But at the same time, I'm still really interested in psychology. It's one of the subjects I'm most interested in, like, in the world. So even if I didn't continue with the degree, like, with the course, I'd still want to listen to audiobooks about psychology. So why don't I just do the degree? Because that's what I want to do. I want to learn more about psychology. It makes sense. I've got an opportunity to do that on a much deeper level. It's weird. It's weird. I don't know. It's, uh, I think it it might be the deadlines, all the kind of having to complete something by a certain time, and I don't I don't necessarily work too well at deadlines or with deadlines, or haven't done up till now. But it's. So I've got this thing that I want to do. There's, there's four things I'd quite like to do in my life, like over the next six years. If I could kind of make a list of things I'd like to do or accomplish in the next six years, get in my, my second degree. So degree, degree, de, blah, blah, blah. the degree in psychology in six years will be completed. Vinny's looking at me like he likes me today. Why are you looking at me like you like me? And then I would quite like to... I want to continue to do, to do this. You know, what I'm doing now. Making recordings, helping people. And hopefully build it up so it's uh, more popular. You know, in six years time, I'm hoping that I'm getting... I'd like to get at least a hundred thousand listens or downloads per day that would be kind of a target i've nearly reached that once in the past but it was a it wasn't you know it's not a regular thing so i'd like to get towards the hundred thousand ideally a million a day but hey a hundred thousand that's still a, a good start and anything connected with what i'm doing here um Within six years, I'd like my YouTube channel to grow. It is growing now, not not subscribers wise, but viewers wise. And uh, the because I'm only doing apart from the shorts, I'm only doing ten hour videos, and it's not for everyone. But I think some people are starting to see the benefit of being able to watch the video or listen to it. It's only 10 seconds of a screen and the rest is just a black screen. So they can watch it on TV or watch it on the phone or listen to it on the phone rather and not have the the light of the, the phone shining out So for the duration of sleep. So I like all the aspects of what I'm doing here, I'd like that to grow. I'd also like to...
get into, which I've talked about before, I'd like to maybe get into some martial arts. I'm thinking perhaps jiu-jitsu. I've kind of gone through all the different clubs locally or within, you know, this kind of area. And I found a jiu-jitsu club that I think once I've done the month training, do a beginner's course, I can then start going during the day, which would suit me better than evenings because the bus is a lot better during the day. So that's something that I'm perhaps looking to do next year. So I come like January time. Bearing in mind we've only got two months of the year left. And so that would be something. And then if I'm able to do that comfortably and it's and I like it and it's and I can physically do it then that would be brilliant to be able to try and get a black belt within six years and that's it really just those three things part of that part of the jiu jitsu is the training you know to get myself a bit healthier uh, which I'm kind of already tried to start on that journey to get myself a bit fitter yeah just thinking about that but I think sometimes I overwhelm myself I sort of I'm going to do this I'm going to do that and blah 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 and then I end up you know with a bit too much But on the same side, it's like, uh, I remember years ago when I was doing a, the massage course, I was working part-time, I was full-time massage course at college, so it's every day, you know, Monday to Friday, pretty much, you know, nine to four or whatever, and I was working evenings every evening and Saturday morning or Saturday during the day I'm not sure maybe Saturday morning and I was also seeing clients in and between that as well practicing the massage and I worked out I did like a timetable I thought well let's just see how much time I'm spending and it worked out that I had about six hours a week to myself It's like, what? You know, I mean, apart from sleeping, I, I just had no time. I'd, I'd booked up practically every inch of time, which was just crazy. But, uh, yeah. So I, I need to be careful of that, not doing that. I mean, it's unlikely I'll be doing that, but... What am I doing? Oh, wait a second, sorry. Stopwatch clamp. Right, I forgot to step, set my stopwatch up to record. So, to record, just to, I need to keep track of how long I'm talking for. Why is he shaking? The window's closed. It's not cold in here. It's not cold. Okay, so yesterday was a really weird day. I didn't feel particularly well. And I went to the park so that Vinny could play with one of his friends. That's the only reason. Just, you know, so he could have a run around. And the good thing about when he's with, he's got two friends that he runs around with. And he stays with them, generally. He's pretty good. Um, I'll, cut th I'll cut through it and make it a short story. But it ended up this little puppy... This woman with a puppy was there, and the two dogs were kind of. Vinny was just like saying hello. The other dog started barking, and then the Vinny started barking, and it was all good. It was just like saying hello to the, to the little dog. And then the mother of the dog came along because she was this dog was with another person. The alarm just went off. That was very strange. 
And yes, yeah, so I, everything was nice until that point. And then it, it happened very quickly. And Vinny, the, the lady had the, the little puppy in, our, in her arms and Vinny was jumping up. He was just so excited and he kept jumping up. And at one point, and she was like screaming. This one was screaming, get him off, get him. So I was trying to catch him and I couldn't get to him because there was three people and another dog. And like I couldn't, I, every time I went to get him, another woman was getting in the way. And I was like, just she, both, all everyone was moving around as well. So I couldn't. So when they moved around, Vinny was moving around. I just couldn't get to him. And I was trying. I actually fell over like twice, I think. And eventually I got him but bef not before he he jumped up and he bit the dog's tail the lady said he bit, her, bit bit the puppy's tail and I was trying to explain that he didn't mean to bite what he you know yes he did I saw him bite hanging off like yeah but I was trying to explain to her that he wasn't being aggressive he was actually playing and he just got overexcited he wasn't he's not an aggressive dog Especially to other dogs, he loves other dogs, little dogs anyway. Not not a big fan of big dogs these days, but and just it all went wrong from there. And I was apologising to her, and she was upset, and I was upset, and I said the wrong things. I was trying to make it better, but in the, in this, you know, she kept going on about, oh, what if it was a, what if it was I had a child in my hand, in my arms? I said it wasn't though. You didn't though, did you? And that that didn't help. And then um, and then I said something ridiculous that I don't even know why I said it. Uh, I said uh, I'd I'd rather it was a child than a than than a puppy. And I don't know why I said that. It's not what I meant, but I, that's the words I said. And he said, "Oh, that explains a lot." Then it's like, "Oh God, when do we get married?" When did that happen? And what I said didn't make sense because I actually, I didn't mean that. And she said, oh, so you, you think it's okay you'd rather him bite children? I was like, no, that's not what I meant. Of course I don't want him to bite kids. So yeah, I was I was saying the wrong thing. I was so confused because I, I was not prepared for that. And... I've never had a situation like that in my life and it won't I will not again either that will not happen again uh, I just didn't know what to do I did not know and luckily the other dog's owner the the dog that Finney plays with she was kind of supportive she was saying well he doesn't that's not like him because she's met Finney loads of times like probably six months seven months of them playing together maybe longer uh, and she, and I, I'm she had a, the, the other the lady with the puppy saying, "Well, why is he like that now?" And like, she's like, "We don't know." It was it's, it was overexcited, but from her perspective, I mean, it must have been absolutely awful, and I felt for her. But at the same time, there was too much going on. I kept apologising to her. And it it wasn't making any difference. And Vinny really didn't do anything wrong. I mean, he did, but he didn't. He didn't purposely. It's kind of like he's barking and then jumping up, and he must have just like perhaps he saw that is like as a like a toy or something. I don't know. And the fact that she was holding and that probably made him want to jump up even more. But she didn't lift him high enough. If she lifted him above her head, it was only a little puppy. It wasn't heavy. Just above her head, I would have had him just stayed still. I could have grabbed him. But she wasn't. She held him around her chest and he was moving around. And I'm not, it wasn't her fault. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it made it harder for me to get to him. And probably being fat probably didn't help me either because I just, clearly not fit enough to chase a, a dog around I tried to get him and I ended up face first in the mud a couple of times 
uh, dropped my phone on the floor. Just like, it was just, I wasn't bothered about the phone. It just, it was just all went a bit weird. I managed to get him in the end, and honestly, probably the worst day of the year so far. Even worse than the funeral. You know, that's at least with a funeral you could upset, you know why you're upset and you know it's it's just a natural situation to be upset about. This is something and I was prepared for it. I'd had a month to prepare for the funeral. This was just well more than a month in fact, probably about six weeks. This was just out of the blue. Whew. I really can't handle stuff like that. It's amazing. And I was saying all the wrong things. And I generally like, I'm, afterwards when I'm at home, I'm thinking, I just came across as an arsehole. And I'm not. I don't think I am. And I, and I poor, it's like I was saying, just, I didn't mean, I wasn't meaning what I was coming across as. I wasn't pre presenting myself in the correct way. I was just trying to explain to her that I cared about a little puppy. It was a beautiful puppy. I mean, literally before that, when she was with the other lady, I was cuddling the puppy. I was like stroking the puppy. Oh, I was so beautiful. And I didn't know Vinny was going to go so over the top. Because he's never done anything like that before. So it's such a shame because I can't ever let him off the lead again, ever. which means you're never going to be able to run around with his friends, uh, either Archie or Noodles, unless they're in a uh, like a garden or something, private garden, then, yeah, outside of that, I mean, I'll have a word with Archie's uh, mum and see whether or not she's up for him coming around and having a little uh, play date with Archie. And if so, then I'll get some film footage of that. Because she's got quite a nice garden, so and she's literally just lives around the corner. And maybe I'll have a word with Noodle's mum to see if she'd be up for something similar, or we go somewhere where there's like a an enclosure. But it's just such a shame. I mean, I just well, I don't know. I mean, I feel that I know how much it means to Vinny to play with them two boys. He just like it's the happiest I see him ever. It's is he's, he's so happy when he's with them too. He just just runs around, cuddles. He's got another friend as well, but he doesn't see him so often. But it's the same thing. He dances, kisses, they and Noodles pretty much did the same thing to Vinny the day before, bit his tail. But he's just playing. It's it's not they're not being vicious, they're just playing with each other. And Vinny probably does the same to Noodles, you know. It's and it's trying to slow the dog down. Probably, it's not. It's not a vicious dog, especially to um, other dogs, and it's even more so with kids. All the, every kid that meets him loves him. Most of the adults love him as well. He's got. He's he's well known around here for being a nice dog. So probably now. His name and my name is Mud now, probably around here. And it's such a shame because something so quick like that can change everything. And it, you know, I just I start thinking, what shall I do? What shall I do about him? Do I have to get rid of him? Do I have to find a new home for him? If he's gonna, you know, if. I don't know I just, just I got confused like I can't hardly give him up can I but it's just I have to make sure he never does that again but should I put a muzzle on him <laughs> yeah he'd like that wouldn't he a muzzle it's not quite that aggressive he does bark at big dogs but what I'm going to have to do is just take him out when there's no one else around don't take him to the park anymore and he'll get his long walks but it won't be how it has been so hey it's such a shame though because he's he's such a loving dog 
is so loving. He loves the people more than the dogs. In fact, when I was apologising yet again to the lady with the puppy, she was sitting down. Vinnie was like at her leg trying to say hello to her and she said can you get your dog off me like okay fair I wasn't taking any notice of what he was doing I had him on the lead at this point like even then all he wanted to do is just be loving in that so yeah it was absolutely awful and it probably wasn't as big a deal as what I thought it was but it felt it if it felt like it was a huge deal to her, which I'm sure it would have been to me if it was my puppy. I'd have lost my... <laughs> I'd have just lost it, I think, if it had been my puppy and another dog was like that. But I would have held it above my head. So it's just... You know, we're talking about a little dog, not an Alsatian here. You know, an Alsatian is at you. Wherever you hold whatever it is, you're not going to be able to keep the Alsatian off. He's a little Jack Russell. He cannot jump above your chest if you're short. He can't get higher than that. Not in any way is possible for him to do it. And he won't ever bite a human. He won't bite anyone on purpose. But yeah, that's what our little Vinny's been up to. I don't worry, I'm going to do the Q&A Friday, but I just... I was going to do a recording about this yesterday, but I couldn't. I had to basically just go to bed. And today I felt better. Because I started to question myself, like, am I a horrible person? Because did I... The things I was saying, I wasn't, like, swearing at her, I don't think. I might have sworn, I don't think I did, but I wasn't, it, it wasn't, it was me, but it was, um, uh, I don't know, it was a different, I was not prepared for that, I wasn't prepared for that situation, and I would say possibly I acted a little bit out of character, but I was trying to protect the puppy. I was trying to protect Vinny from her kicking him, which she was trying to do. She kicked him a few times to get him off her, which is, I suppose, it's fair enough from her perspective, but to see him being kicked in the face by, a, by someone is quite hard to see, especially at that point, he all he'd been doing was just jumping up. So it was, yeah, it was a very difficult and I just wish it hadn't happened. You know, I'd give anything just to it. That is, and I know a lot of people listening probably think it's just, why would I even be bothered by it? But I am. I'm bothered by it because I don't want that. I mean, the puppy was scared. And I hate seeing that. She's honestly the cutest little puppy in the world. And that's what I was trying to explain to her, that I would, I'd rather him hit, bite a kid. But when I, when I said that, I was talking about nipping, which is what he did. He nipped, you know, and he has nipped a couple of kids in the past by accident, before I, by being overexcited. And it's a nip. He would never bite anyone like that. When he was a puppy, yeah, okay, he was a bit bitey. But as an adult, he doesn't. He'll snap, you know, if I grab him, if I, and he, he can be snappy if he's caught off guard. But that is, he's not like a, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. <sighs> and then Wednesday, I made a recording. And I deleted it because it was awful. Worse than this. <laughs> Could you believe? There was a few funny bits actually, but I, I just like this. I can't make recordings when I'm in that mindset. 
and it was a different mindset it was, but it was Wednesday because I, I hadn't had a great uh, Wednesday or Thursday Tuesday I'd had a headache but it wasn't too bad but Wednesday, Thursday it was not good but Wednesday I'd made a recording I thought I'd still do the recording no hour and a half talking and or hour and 40 minutes and I just deleted it in the end because it was not nice it wasn't um, particularly pleasant recording because I was just talking about real stuff and I know I do talk about real stuff sometimes but I don't want to do too much of that because I'd like to keep this as light hearted as possible I mean the recording I did the caring for others recording that at the very beginning I tell everyone like this is not going to be like a normal recording turn it off if it's, if it's, it's going to be serious don't be talking about serious stuff and all that stuff so I do there is a, like a warning right at the beginning but this you know this is this isn't one of those so I'll, I'll move on from that but I just wanted to update you on Vinny's <laughs> adventures so now I'm I can only really take him out when there's no one else around because I don't know what the comeback's going to be on that one I don't know if there's going to be a backlash. Uh, so it's it's just weird. It's awful. I mean, first when I saw, saw that puppy, all I wanted to do was just kiss him because he was so beautiful. And he was a puppy, but he was he was old enough to walk, so. And she said it's his second walk and now he's going to be traumatised. And that, I pray my heart, you know, the idea that that might be the case. And so my concern was the puppy. Out of everything, it was for the puppy. And I don't know if I really perhaps presented myself too well. I wasn't, well, I was a bit worried about Vinny when she started kicking him in the face, but you know, but at the same time, I couldn't get to him. I mean, she was kicking, but I think it was more trying to push him away. And it was just, it was like a farce. I've got it all recorded on my phone. Not the, because uh, I was recording, I basically had my phone on so I could record Vinny and Noodles playing together. But they wouldn't, they wouldn't spend more than like, three seconds together then it'd run off again so I had the phone I thought oh, I just told his mum told me as well I'll keep the phone on recording and then whenever I can get them together I will and that's when this happened and my phone fell on the floor and you can hear the whole event um, I'm going to store it but I'm not going to release it on because it's not it sounds really bad really bad um, it was bad, but it wasn't um, the, you know, it just, there was a lot of screaming. And most of it was coming from me. <laughs> Screw up, me. Anyway, so Q&A Friday, man. Yeah, man. So let's just have a look, see what we've got. Uh, oh, God. I want someone phoning me. I don't want anyone to phone me. Stop phoning me. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, da 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 da. Uh, da da da. So, I'm just trying to find it. Sorry, give me two seconds. It, it, Jason Newland's boring group. Right, Q&A Friday. Yeah, I've only got three. So this is going to be a very short recording, I guess. Unless, of course, unless you're listening for ten hours. Wait a minute, it's four. 
It says I've got three comments, but there's actually four. Oh, so there's four questions. Okay. One from Ben Dave. Ben. One from Diane R. One from Dimitri. And one from Claire. So, which one? I'll start with Ben. I'll start at the top. So, Ben asks me, fave cartoons, the favourite cartoons as a child. Ooh. How far back do you want to go and how far forward do you want to go? Because... To be fair, I was watching cartoons in my 20s. One of my favourite cartoons ever is two. One I discovered when I was an adult. And it's because it, I don't think it was around, to be fair, when I was a kid. But it's the X-Men. The X-Men cartoons. I love the X-Men. I used to watch it... In 1995, 1995, every morning it'd be on. They'd show it. I'd have my breakfast, and I'd hear the tune. Do 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 there was the X-Men anyway and I loved that the other one is something that I watched in my 20s but I also watched it when I was a teenager and that is Muppet Babies I loved Muppet Babies but that's older childhood and so I went through different periods. I went through I went through the period of watching cartoons myself. I didn't get to watch cartoons. No, two periods. First of all, when I was really little. As far as children's shows, I used to watch Andy Pandy. And this is when I was, what, probably three, four or something. I don't remember much. I do remember watching Andy Pandy though. That was one of my favourites. And it was on kind of midday, late morning, maybe early afternoon. And then I watched, because I wasn't old enough to go to school. But I got to fast forward till I was about seven before I started watching cartoons again. And I... In the 70s, like 77, for example, which is kind of the year I'm starting from there, things were different to how they are now. Because if you go to ITV or BBC, it's all cookie, cookery programs. Cookie? Cookie programs. It's just, that's all it seems to be, is cookery shows. When I was a kid... It was always, uh, usually it was like a, I don't know what you want to call them, kids, show, kids shows that had cartoons on them. So when I was about seven, on a Saturday morning, we had Tiz Was with Chris Tarrant and we had the multicoloured swap shop which was Noel Edmonds and what's his name he was a kid on it I forget Keith Chegwin Cheggers Cheggers was on that and he was only a kid I say a kid I don't know he might have been 17 or whatever but he was young so he was on there with Noel Edmonds and they'd have the show but then in, they'd have slots where they'd have cartoons. And what we would do, we kind of get to know the format and we'd swap over, the, me and my brothers, we'd swap over between Multicoloured Swap Shop and the Tiswas so that we could catch the correct cartoons. 
trying to think which ones I remember. I mean, there's always like Tom and Jerry, you know, Disney stuff. But then there was Hong Kong Fooey. I loved Hong Kong Fooey. Do you remember? Hung- Anyone remember that? It used to get changed inside a filing cabinet. And there was oh dee 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 oh yeah, catch the pigeon. Was it called Catch the Pigeon or was it another name? But the theme tune was Catch the Pigeon, Catch the Pigeon, Catch the Pigeon now, Catch the Pigeon, I think. But then that character, Dastardly and Muttley, who were in Catch the Pigeon, they were also in like another cartoon that were, they became the stars of that cartoon. It's, yeah, so I'm not sure if they had their own cartoon, but Dastardly and Muttley. And then there was the Pink Panther. The Pink Panther, not the, not the movies, but the cartoon. do 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 Pink Panther, Pink Panther. do 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 He's pink from head to his toes. He did do 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 Pink Panther. And then it was always do 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 And it was the same tune every single week. Variations of the same tune. Do 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 And you had Inspector Clouseau and the Pink Panther. And it was to be fair, I'm not sure did did they have the Pink Panther actually with real life stuff as well so the pink panther and there was like humans i got a vague memory of that but it was definitely i'm sure that used to be on but i remember it used to be on peak time at one point like in my older childhood years maybe well a couple of years later maybe used to be on like six o'clock on a saturday evening it was peak time viewing along with maybe the muppets But at that time, I think it was on like as a cartoon. Uh, yeah. So the Pink Panther, Hong Kong Fury, the blah, 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 Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry was always a, a roadrunner. Roadrunner. Um, doing. No, that's just me doing an impression of the roadrunner. Um. They were so creative. I mean, how many ways can you chuck an anvil off the end of a cliff? You know, it's just... Oh, what's the other one? Um, Speedy Gonzales. These are characters that probably wouldn't be allowed anymore. But Speedy Gonzales was... We used to go... And like, he was a gunslinger. And he had a big beard and he was about two inches tall and I think he had red hair and a hat. And it was, they were just iconic characters for that time. Hong Kong Fury. The Banana Splits. Not a cartoon. Not a cartoon. But at the time, shows how old I am. At the time... The monkeys used to be on. I mean, it was repeat, obviously, because the monkeys was from the 60s, wasn't it? But the TV show was shown. I don't know if it was on in the morning, part of the show, and they just showed the monkeys, or if it was separate. I think it was part of the show, part of the Tiz Was or whatever one it was. The banana splits were part of the monkeys, and then they got their own show. And it was... Uh, Monkey, 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 splits, splits. No. No, that's not right. Um, we're the monkeys. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys, though. One banana, two banana, three banana, four, five banana, six banana, seven banana more. One banana, da 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 da
uh, what was that movie kick ass i think they moved um they used that sound sh- soundtrack for one of the fight scenes in kick ass la 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 um I used to like the monkeys. I've never... I liked every song they ever did. And I know that they'd broken up by then. You know, 77. They'd, they'd been they'd been closed for probably 10 years at that point. But they were still... On our TV in, in England, they were still showing those old shows. I mean, even in the middle 80s, they were still showing Dr. Kildare, which was from the 60s, maybe 50s. They'd show that on a on a like a Tuesday evening, on a BBC Two or Channel Four. Because when Channel Four started, a lot of it was just old stuff, and I think they did one thing of their own, which was the Brookside. Um, in the early days, like eight nineteen eighty two or whatever year they started. Blimey. What other cartoons did I like? The three... No. I'm just trying to think of that because it's changed because there's the early one. Like, you know, I can only go back as far as... Probably the Moon... 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 Moons or whatever was early. Then 77. And then there's another period which would be... I can't. I can kind of remember which would be more like the period when I used to watch cartoons with my little brother. So I would be about thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and he was eight years younger than me. So I'd watch the cartoons with him. So I'll move on to that area. That that era was more the Three Musket Hounds. Oh yeah, I used to love watching. It's like like watching it on my own. Even I had. Uh... Oh, Mighty Mouse and Danger Mouse. Danger Mouse was one of my favourite cartoons. He's courageous. He's outrageous. Wherever there is danger, he'll be there. Danger Mouse, Mighty Mouse. No, anyway. Danger mouse. Danger mouse. Danger mouse. So yeah, I like that. Um, I think they did a new version of it, but without the voices, the the original people, because Danger Mouse was Del Boy, David Jason, and. Ooh, what was his name? Danger Mouse and... It was a mole. Danger Mouse's sidekick was a mole. And he was... Terry Scott from Terry and June. See, if you're from another country and you don't know who Terry Scott is, check him out, honestly his voice it was so good with his voice uh, Danger Mouse just go on YouTube check it out you might not have even seen it and I know it's probably aged it's dated probably but Terry Scott had such a good voice and Mole was he Moley Danger Mouse and Mole. I'll remember it eventually. But that was more early 80s, I think. So I used to watch that. But then, like, more middle 80s, I started watching stuff with my little brother. Um, the Musket Hounds. Awful one and awful. Oh, awful one and one for all. Oh, Musket hounds are always ready. One for all and all for one. Helping everybody. One for all and all for one. It's a thin story. Oh, they're all dogs, wouldn't they? Blimey, I just realised that. Musket hounds, they're all dogs. 
I used to like that show. And Fraggle Rock. See, I didn't like these shows because my little brother liked them. I liked them because I liked them. And it gave me an excuse to watch them. So I loved Fraggle Rock. Especially even now, the uh, the trash heap has spoken. I loved that. The trash heap talking and like giving advice and stuff. But was that... Um, was it let the music play? Do, do, go in for another day. Do, 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 down at Fraggle Rock. Pew, pew. I mean, continuously, the 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 little workers, construction workers, always building the roads and the train tracks, or whatever the buildings, and the Fraggle just coming and eating them. It's you know, I think it's a metaphor for life sometimes. So yeah, I used to watch that. I used to love love that. Other cartoons I used to like. Uh, Muppet Babies. I know I mentioned that, but that was one of my favourite. I watched that in my 20s. When I was like 22, 23, 24. They used to have it on TV in the, after, in the morning. Because we still had cartoons and children's programmes in the morning. But there was a time when the show in the morning was not really it was aimed at kids but it wasn't really for kids well, it was for adults as well it was kind of it was Ant and Deck and Cat Dealey and it was funny they were all so good together and I still think it's the best thing any of them ever did I know they all went on to, to be huge successes and stuff but that show was so good. Uh, it was just funny, and I was, and it, the kids liked it. But I was, you know, I was an adult technically. I loved it. I used to watch it whenever I wasn't working on the Saturday morning. I'd, wa I'd watch it, and it was good. I did. It was really good. But I, yeah, they used to have. See, okay, I think they must have had the Muppet Babies. Either they had it on during the show or after or before. Probably, you know, I'm not sure. But I used to watch that. But it lasted for about half an hour, I think. Muppet Babies, make your dreams come true. Muppet, 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 Babies. Yeah. What other things? I used to quite like Sesame Street. I know Sesame Street's not a cartoon, but I I found Sesame Street quite funny at times. And when you consider, lots of famous people went on there. Even though it's technically, supposedly, educationally, you know that kind of thing, but. I used to quite like watching it when I had a day off school or you know through a sickie or whatever it'd be quite nice to just watch Sesame Street let the music play going for another day da -da 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 -da. no that's Fraggle Rock isn't it here we come knocking down us no that's a different one Sesame Street it's a Sesame Street Come on down to Sesame Street. That might not be the correct tune, but it was something like that. Come on down to Sesame Street. It's a really nice street to come on down. Come on down to Sesame Street, where you can learn from puppets. I heard some of the characters like the Cookie Monster. Oh. And then you had the Muppets, of course. But that, okay, I'm moving away from the cartoons here. Just trying to think what other cartoons I really, really liked. Okay, as an adult, was this question about as a child? Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Okay. Because as, as an adult, I'd say Family Guy was my favourite cartoon. And I used to really enjoy The Simpsons when it first started. Uh, you know, first 
for the first hundred years or so. Uh, what was my all-time favourite cartoon? Maybe Muppet... I think Muppet, made, Muppet Babies used to... It felt good watching it. It's a feel-good thing. Because it was all about imagination, wasn't it? They'd just imagine like a whole new world and they'd be doing whatever in their imagination and then their mum or their nanny would come and give them some food. And I don't know, just very different from the Muppets, the actual show, the Muppets, even though all the characters were on there, like Hermie and Miss Piggy and Animal and Fozzie, you know, Fozzie Bear and whatever. I don't know. So yeah, cartoon wise, is the one that I've missed out though. Is the one that was like proper, proper good, and I loved it, but I've not remembered it. That would seem like a real, a real stinky shame, wouldn't it? I wonder. Hong Kong Fury. Tom and Jerry I did like the Disney stuff I mean uh, you know anything as well I know Tom and Jerry wasn't Disney but I like the Disney stuff like Donald Duck and but I wasn't when I used to because Disney used to be on when I was yeah during my childhood Quite often it'd be on a Saturday evening, like an actual prime time TV program, and I was, and it always like showed you, like filmed as zoomed into the tower, you know, the Disney Tower, and I used to cross my my fingers like, please let it be a real life, you know, because sometimes it'd be a cartoon. Sometimes it'd be a mixture between cartoon and uh, an animation and real life. Other times it'd just be real life, and I preferred it when it was just humans acting. I don't know why. I just did. I'm really trying to think of some other cartoons. Uh, come on, come on, other cartoons. Where other cartoons? Anyone? There's probably some really obvious ones that are not coming to mind. When I was a kid. Banana Man, I used to like Banana Man. Um, uh, I suppose Danger Mouse is one of my favourite ones. I didn't have like one specific favourite all time greatest cartoon really um, I think of the Muppet Babies because that lasted a lot longer than the others and it's something that I probably would still watch now just out of just nostalgia really if it was on I'd probably watch it I prefer the animation back then to the one now it's just, it doesn't seem, I don't know, just, just seemed better back then. But I was a kid, I was looking through child's eyes, wasn't I? Uh, so I've done the Pink Panther. There's probably loads, loads that I'm not remembering or that's not coming into my memory. The 
Yeah, off the top of my head, I can't really think of any others. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's all the ones I can... So I don't have a specific, mostest, favouritist. But... But I've got... You did say five favourite cartoons. So you didn't ask for this one. So Ben, I've got... There's, they're kind of the ones... I'd say... I love the Musker Hounds. But I was kind of 15, 14, 15 at the time. But I just loved it. I just, I don't know why. I just, it, it was nice to be able to get away with watching cartoons because my brother was like seven. So he was watching them and I was watching them. And again, I loved watching Fraggle Rock, but that wasn't a cartoon, was it? That was puppets. Yeah, I can't think of any others. There's probably loads. Oh, Scooby-Doo, blimey. How did I forget Scooby-Doo? Scooby-Doo was probably one of my favourites as well. It was, yeah, especially when I was young. Yeah, I loved Scooby-Doo. Yeah, I did. I did love Scooby-Doo. That was funny. Um. So I couldn't think of any others in a thought of Scooby-Doo. wonder what others that like... It's probably some really big ones that I've completely mislaid. Mislaid. Just disappeared. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway. So that's some of the ones that I really, really, really loved. Uh, so Diana asks me, when you do the countdown in your 10-hour podcast, do you actually sit there and do the countdown or is it pre-recorded? Okay. Um, sorry, this is, I'm just going to ask, do you mean do I sit here every time and do 10 hours of talking or is that what you mean I don't know um, I I basically recorded the each one each bit separate and put them together but I do sit there and do the countdown so if it's like a hundred down to one even if it takes an hour or longer I will sit there and do the whole thing it is hard uh, I did it before years ago I did it and I used to like just count down 100 99 98 97 96 95 and then add gaps in between but it didn't come out well it just it didn't sound right so and the the idea is a hundred ninety nine ninety eight and then as the low the numbers get lower there's a longer gap between them that's kind of so it is the the ten hour part so I make the recording the ten hour part is all pre recorded and ready so when I do the I do the whatever recording for this this example let's say this lasts for an hour and then add the other bits onto the end because yeah I mean I don't yeah I couldn't count you're right it says there waking up when you wake up during the night you find it comforting you have no idea how I count down from 100 and how it doesn't put me to sleep. It does. Sometimes it does and I have to edit it. So when I do... Because I've done the countdown from 100 down to 1 loads of different times in different podcasts over the years. And also the body scan, like focusing on the top of the head and then gradually working down to, the, to my toes. And sometimes I'll do versions where it's like top of my head... 
and then relax. Now focus on your forehead. Relax. And sometimes a counting down will be, you know, 100. Relax deeply. 99. Relax deeply. And I say the word, I say the number individually, I say the word, the words relax deeply each time as well. I mean, technically, I could just sort of 100, 99, eight, and count all the way down, or count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way up to 100, and then just say relax deeply once and just copy and paste it in each one. But I just don't think it has the same rhythm or the same doesn't feel the same to me it feels real if I've actually done it and it is hard it's hard to do it you know uh, it's hard it's not hard but it's hard to do it without falling asleep so yeah I don't but as far as I don't every time I make a recording I don't spend 10 hours talking that would be well I just it wouldn't I don't think I could Possibly, I don't think I could physically do that. It's um, it'd be too difficult. I'd have no voice left if I was speaking for ten hours, uh, and especially as this, this, yeah. But with the, you're right with the counting down. Blimey, I do do it. I have done it. But it was hard. It was hard to not fall asleep. Uh, as well as the body scan. Whenever I do the body scan, it's very hard to keep track of what I'm saying. Uh, even what part of my body I'm focusing on. I hope I answered that. Uh, okay. Um, thank you for that, Diana. Thank you, Ben. The next question is from Dimitri. Who's going to win the Tyson versus Paul fight? I did see that earlier. I saw the question and I thought, Tyson's fought fighting Usyk. And I completely forgot about the Mike Tyson fighting um, whoever it is he's fighting, one of the Paul brothers. And I forgot about that because when I now when I think of Tyson, I think of Tyson Fury because you know he's well he's the the one that's or was the champion, and I think will be the champion again come December the twenty first, I think. Or was it twenty fourth? I think I think it's the twenty first. Uh, who's going to win the Tyson versus Paul fight? Uh, see, I don't think they should be fighting personally. He's what fifty eight years old, something like that. I mean, come on, that's just ridiculous. It doesn't matter if you want to. You know, a lot of people. I'm not saying I'm saying I think I personally think it's silly that they're doing it. I understand why they're doing it because it's money. That's a lot of money that they're both going to be making. But I, I used to believe back in the day when these YouTube fights started. Because it was a novelty, you know. It's like, okay, who can we get fighting each other? And you had Mike Tyson fought Roy Jones Jr. And that was just a... It was an exhibition, really. But Mike Tyson did hurt Roy Jones in the stomach. I think he broke a couple of his ribs. And he didn't punch Jones hardly at all in the face. But Roy Jones did punch Tyson in the face a few times. But the whole thing was just a bit pointless. 
because they were both too old to be doing it. And this was, what, four or five years ago now. But for those that, that say online, oh, Mike Tyson's going to knock him out and want to... I used to think that about Evander Holyfield because Evander Holyfield got on this gravy train to make some money and he went in the ring. Now, Evander Holyfield is arguably, arguably, I mean, he, he is technically the most successful heavyweight champion of all time. He's held the belts more than anyone else in history. He also, he was just amazing, amazing fighter. But he was old. He Again, he was in his 50s, maybe 55, 54, when he fought in the ring with an ex-MMA fighter. There was boxing rules, so there was no kicking or anything like that. But Holyfield... And I thought, just on his basic instincts, no uh, rabbits involved, just basically Van Holyfield should win. Just knock this bloke out and it'll be done. And the opposite happened. Van Holyfield got battered straight away, really quickly by this man, this ex-MMA fighter or UFC or whatever. And, you know, 20 years ago, whenever Holyfield was actively a boxer doing in his prime, or even at the end of his prime, would have just laughed at this MMA fighter in a boxing ring. Not in the MMA ring or the UFC ring, because a boxer doesn't stand a lot. They, they stand a chance, but as soon as the... MMA fighter grabs them it's pretty much over so a boxer all they've got is the punch and if they don't get the punch in quick enough they're in trouble if they do then good but that's what I've noticed in my observations of the sport the crossover but Holyfield who I think anyone it's hard to argue that Holyfield to say that Holyfield wasn't better than Tyson in at least the last 10 years of them both fighting Holyfield just beat Tyson he was better uh, you know Tyson the, the problem with Tyson his, he hit his peak at probably 1920 most heavyweight fighters don't hit their peak till they're maybe in their thir like 30 late 20s early 30s maybe but at least you know late late 20s Tyson hit his peak really early which makes me laugh when people talk about um, some heavyweight boxers and say oh, what is he going to he's only 19 it's only 21. Wait until he gets his man strength. No one said that about Mike Tyson. Wait till Mike Tyson gets his man strength. Not one person would have said that. It's so ridiculous. Like suddenly Mike Tyson was going to become stronger because he was 25. Guaranteed, I don't think he became stronger. He was, he was at his peak at a very early age that peak might have beaten Holyfield you know Holyfield in his peak against Tyson in his peak it would have been a different fight perhaps but it's really it'd be foolish to underestimate Holyfield at any point because he was phenomenal he really was you know through most of his career he was amazing and through a lot of his career, Tyson wasn't amazing. He was amazing at times, especially at the beginning, you know, when he first won the world titles. I know he had that long break, and then he came back, and he he seemed like he was back on form. 
but he struggled a bit with some of the other fighters that Lennox Lewis just wiped away really quickly. For example, Andrew Galotta. Tyson, he beat him. Tyson, you know, Andrew Galotta wouldn't come out for one of the rounds after he took a beating, but it took a while to do it. It wasn't an easy fight. It wasn't an easy one to watch. It didn't go and he gave Tyson a good old fight when he fought um, Riddick Bow, this Andrew Galotta he clearly won both those fights but he got disqualified twice for low blows and he didn't need to he was beating Riddick Bow up he's one of the, one of those people who say he should have he should have been would have been should have been heavyweight champion if he'd have only been able to keep his punches high, higher, he was absolutely wiping the floor with Riddick Bow, and both the fights ended in controversy because of low blows. So he got disqualified twice, and then he fought Lennox Lewis, and Lennox Lewis just knocked him out, clean out. almost easily so it's quite weird if you look at the same opponents how it worked Lennox Lewis he fought Holyfield he fought Tyson went the distance for Holyfield twice beat him twice or did did he beat him twice or was the first one a, a draw I can't remember but he beat Tyson of course in 2001 or 2002 anyway the point I'm trying to make is we've got a really strong young man who's what is he 26 27 with knockout power he's not just he's not an average person it's not like it's me going in the ring with someone like Tyson this is someone that's a trained boxer now he's had quite a few fights he trains full time by some of the he's going to have some of the best trainers in, in the world working with him some of the best sparring partners because he's got the money I don't think I think Tyson will get knocked out and I don't want to see that I really don't generally I mean think about it Would okay if you, if I look at it different ways. If you look at Mike Tyson's last opponent who knocked him out, and he kind of quit from then, he's just like, "No, that's it, done." I think he might quit on his stall, but it, that was it. He'd had enough. So that opponent would John Paul or whatever his first name is. How would he fare against that bloke? And I'd say he'd probably beat him. So Paul, as he is now, would have been beaten the last person that beat Mike Tyson 20 years ago. So if, looking at it that way, so if the person who couldn't beat Mike Tyson 20 years ago, who, who could beat Mike Tyson 20 years ago, And Paul could beat him, the same person if those kind of was you know same age or whatever. He could, I think, Paul could have beaten him, which means technically, I know it's not always the same, doesn't work out that way. Paul possibly could have beaten Tyson on that night. So twenty years later, if he could beat a Tyson twenty years ago, he's going to be able to beat a Tyson now. And you can't, you know, he's still going to have a punch. But his, his punch resilience, resilience rather, went, it left him. It wasn't there anymore. His heart wasn't in it near the end. He was only doing it for money. You know, old Mike Tyson was in so much debt, he wasn't really even getting paid hardly anything out of the fights he was taking. But he owed 
like two hundred million dollars or something like that. So he was doing it for the money, and his heart wasn't in it. And it was kind of sad because he wouldn't have stood it. Any of those people, was well, by the last person especially, wouldn't have stood a chance against him when he was in his prime. I'll tell you who was good though. Danny, 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 what was his surname? Danny, and it was Danny anyway. He was an English fighter and he knocked Tyson out. And he went in with Klitschko and got knocked down multiple times. But the thing is, he was really good. Danny, oh, I can't remember his surname. The thing is, he fought Klitschko probably in his peak, and Klitschko is one of the one of the greats. I can't remember which Klitsch, Klitschko he fought. If it was Vladimir or um, Ben, I can't remember, or Bobby, Bobby Klitschko. But the the thing is. I once saw there was a fight that um, Danny I keep saying Danny 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 not Danny Evans Danny 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 that's good I bet it'll come to me just at the end or just after I finish recording Danny I'm not going to look it up. It's not that important. I mean, it's important to him, but I mean, it's not important for the recording. I was a fan of his because he had this fight once and he, he absolutely dislocated his shoulder, his right arm, so he couldn't show the, he couldn't throw the right punch, which was his knockout punch. And he actually he couldn't continue with the fight really he had at the end of that round they would have stopped the fight because he had his displayed shoulder but they let him fight on for that round but I reckon it would have been a stoppage they would have had to stop it because it's too bad an injury he couldn't protect himself he managed to knock out his opponent with just his left hand just with jabs and I've never seen that in my life. It's a very, very spectacular ending. It, that's Danny. Oh, it nearly came to me then. Danny. So yeah, I was a fan of his. And the way he knocked Mike Tyson out was very similar to the way Buster Douglas knocked Mike Tyson out. It's almost, if you watch the two together, it's a very similar, very similar kind of knockout process. And Danny, yeah, I'm going to keep saying Danny, I can't, oh, Danny, I keep thinking Evans, but it's not Danny Evans. Danny, anyway, he's, uh, so I'm thinking... RuPaul, is it RuPaul, Ru, whatever his name is, I think he will win the Tyson fight, unless it's fixed, it might just be fixed to be like a wrestling match, you know, like pre-rehearsed, um, one goes down, then the other goes down, and the ideal situation would be Mike Tyson winning, because then it would be kind of like, to show that someone can still win even though they're like nearly 60 years old against a, a young man physically fit strong young man but uh, uh, it's they might do that for the entertainment value maybe they'll even make it so there's a rematch so people are talking about it and want a rematch and uh, end it with a controversy maybe end it with a draw 
Perhaps they'll do it so both go down. But after the, the, the fights I've seen, um, John Paul Gaultier, whatever his name is, the, the, none of his fights look staged to me because he does, he lays people out. Like really, he's he's got a good punch on him. So, but he's not a heavyweight. He's more like light heavyweight. But then maybe Mike Tyson's not a heavyweight anymore. He's cause he never... He was never a heavy heavyweight anyway. Not that he needed to be. He had the... Uh, he had the whole Rocky Marciano. Not Rocky Balboa. Rocky Marciano. Kind of thing. Wasn't particularly heavy. Wasn't particularly tall. But he had that style of getting underneath and in. To the taller guys. And... If anything, I think he probably did better with the taller guys. Those that were willing to have a fight with him. I mean, Bone Crusher Smith and Tony Tucker both kept out of his way for the 12 rounds. So they managed to go the distance. But anyone that was, that was willing to kind of really swap pity patter with him usually ended up going sleepy wee beebies, sleepy buyers. So yeah, I reckon if it's a real, real thing, um, Jake, Jake Paul, isn't it? Jake Paul will win and it'll get stopped because it shouldn't be happening to fur in the first place. And I really, really hope I hope, really hope that Mike Tyson has been tested. All the tests that need to be done to make sure that he's okay and he's well enough, physically well enough uh, to be doing this. But what, He might come unstuck though, Jake Paul, because I'm just trying to think of Mayweather. See, Mayweather still does, he still does boxing bouts. He still does it as like just for fun, I think. But you know, he gets paid good money, but he doesn't fight boxers now that are kind of world champions or world champion level in boxing. But he did, he fought TGI, what's his name? KSI's brother. And he was dancing around, not, not KSI's brother. Is it chaos, 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 chaos brother, KSI B then, I suppose, KSI's brother. He, I think his name is uh, Steve, and he, Mayweather was, Mayweather was dancing around, he didn't sit down in between rounds, and he was just smiling and waving at the audience and all that stuff, and he, he just played around with, uh, KSI's brother and just bobbed and weaved and tapped him a little bit and that was it and then KSI's brother punched Mayweather really hard in the face like it was a really good punch and punched him in the eye or in the lip or whatever but he, you could see it he turned he changed and he then went bad, KSI's brother, and basically got stopped. So there's a chance that if Tice, Mike Tyson gets clipped and he gets hurt, his natural instinct might come into play. And I'm not sure if Jake Paul could handle Mike Tyson's natural instinct because that Mike Tyson was a fighter you know unlike anyone else in well in my lifetime really he was a very unique kind of uh, boxer I mean my favourite boxer now is Fabio Wardley but it has been for quite a while 
my favourite heavyweight, Fabio. It's just amazing. And I think he's got... Sometimes boxers have got that natural toughness and raw talent. They're natural fighters. Mike Tyson was a natural fighter. Fabio Wardley is a natural fighter. Um, Gotti was a natural fighter. You got those that have just become amazing because they've trained really hard and they've learnt the skills and all that stuff. But there's some that are just natural and they might not always go on to be successful because they can get outboxed. Unless the other boxer is willing to get into a fight with them and they will come out the other end winning. But a lot of really, there's a lot of really clever boxers out there and they don't need to do that. They can win on points and they will. And I don't blame them. I don't get paid extra for getting hurt. And they keep their world title or keep their keep their unbeaten record. So that might happen with Fabio. He might get beaten by on points. But I don't foresee anyone being able to knock him out. Because he is he's on a different level. And he's proved that a few times actually. And I don't think the world would take notice, not really, until he does it to someone big. If he went in with Anthony Joshua, he'd knock Anthony Joshua out, I'm 100%. If he went in with... I don't think there's anyone uh, that he couldn't knock down. Apart, I'm not sure about Usyk. Because U six never shown any any clue of ever being really knocked, not wobbled. He's been hurt, but he's never looked like he was going to go down. I don't think Tyson Fury's gone down multiple times, but he always gets up. It's like the Weeble. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. He falls down, but he does get up. And he's got so much heart. Um, I'm thinking. What's his name? They're talking about potential today. The the boxing world are talking about potential Fabio Wardley against Wilder, and I'd I'd love to see that fight. But the only problem with that is Fabio would have to be careful. But I think he'll be all right because I. I pretty sure he's in the same team as Joseph Parker I do believe he is and Joseph Parker knew how to beat Wilder and he did it by staying in Wilder's face but at the same time not letting Wilder punch him now if Wilder can punch her that's, that's where his I know it sounds silly if a boxer can hit you, that's where they're going to... Yeah, I know. But Wilder's a special case because he's got a... He's got a knockout punch in both hands. And there's no one he could knock out if he hit them. Like, you know, there's no one. He's got... It's, it's just phenomenal power. But I think Fabio's probably got that as well at least in his right hand so I think Fabio would be too quick for him and knock him out but there's always a chance because Fabio comes forward the whole time and I've seen Wilder lay on the ropes and catch someone as they've come in and put them to sleep so I don't want to you know I don't want that to happen because I'm, I'm, I'm Fabio's proper, one of his biggest fans. I just think he's phenomenal and he's the real deal. But he has to fight the big guys. As, uh, what I mean by that is the, the top guys. So I keep saying, oh, we should fight um, the bloke Anderson from America that got beaten by 
whoever beat Anderson, I don't know. Was it? Oh, who beat Anderson? Was it Dubois that beat Anderson? I think it might have been. It's like no, don't don't put him in this against someone that's been beaten. Put him in against someone whose last fight he got beat. Put him in against someone that's on the winning streak. Put him against someone in the top five. That's what I think. Put him in against uh, Zhang, the Big Bang. Put him in against him. Put him in against. He won't fight Joseph Parker, I don't think, because they're friends and they they train together. I'd like to see either way. I sit because now all the belts are going to be fragmented. So I'd like to see Fabio fight for a world title, a vacant world title against another, like the number one, number two, whatever. And I think the Dubai people can do that because they've got the money. They can put that into action. So let them, I don't want to see Fabio necessarily fight Usyk or even Tyson Fury. I would like to see him fight someone else. Uh, I think him and Dubois would be an amazing fight and I do think he'd win he'd win that Fabio but at the same time I'm a big fan of Dubois I have been for a long time so you know that's what I didn't like it when Dubois and what's his name fought because I like both of them I don't like it when they put people together that I like uh, the juggernaut so they did that with Joseph Parker because I'm, like, I'm a fan of his and they put him in with a juggernaut I don't want to see people I like beating each other up no so that's why Tyson and Wilder Tyson Fury I've been a fan of Wilder for 10 years or more and and of Tyson Fury for like 10, 12 years so I don't want to I, didn't, I did want to see them fight but at the same time I didn't because I've always uh, I'm a fan of both of them I side with Tyson Fury because you know it's, he's he's the national a national hero here so we've got to side with him but at the same time you know I even I loved Mike Tyson but when he fought Frank Bruno I wanted Frank Bruno to win I did it's just it was I would always want Frank Bruno to win against anybody in any situation because I loved Frank Bruno. He was a national hero and still is as far as I'm concerned. So, but then when Frank Bruno fought Lennox Lewis, I wanted Frank Bruno to win again. But I was a fan of Lennox Lewis. But I didn't like the fact that he beat up two of our heroes. Gary Mason. Actually before that, someone else. Uh, a former cruiserweight champion. He beat him up. Then he beat up Gary Mason. Then he beat up Frank Bruno. Actually, he didn't beat up Frank Bruno. Frank Bruno beat him up. But he did knock out Frank Bruno. Bruno was well ahead on those cards, I'm pretty sure. He was ahead on points until he got clipped. Uh, which he was of all of his fights where he got beaten apart from against Mike Tyson I stick to that Frank Bruno got beaten by Bone Crusher Smith he was ahead on that fight until he got clipped with a spoon in 1986 I think it was he was ahead on points there until he got clipped and then he fought Mike Tyson Okay, he, he was a, one of the first people to hurt Mike Tyson, but he did got beat. So we're going to miss out the Mike Tyson fights. The next time he got a lot, he lost was against Lennox Lewis. And again, he was on points. He was ahead on points before he lost. So out of the five times he lost, he was ahead on points with those three of those fights. It's just the two Mike Tyson fights where he wasn't. Um, and the, the weird thing is Mike Tyson 
the first time we fought Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson was kind of pretty much in his peak, although he did get he did get beaten in his next fight, but he was still a young Mike Tyson. The second time he fought Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson wanted his world title because he just got out of prison and he was been training. He was really, you know, he wanted that probably more than anything in the world. So, and that was probably, I imagine that was Frank Bruno's biggest payday because he wanted that belt. And that's, I don't think Mike Tyson got enough credit considering he won two world titles again after he got out of prison. So he did, um, he won three world titles. So he unified all the heavyweight champion world titles in by 1987, was it? Maybe 88, but 87, I think he'd unified everything. And then in 96, he won two world titles, two different world titles. So, you know, he didn't unify it the second time, but he tried to. But ultimately, you could say he won five world titles individually. He was, he was a champion when he won them, because the, he won one title with Trevor Burbick, then he fought Bone Crusher Smith, and then he fought Tony Tucker. I think it was in that order. Um, so he won each individual title. And then he fought Frank Bruno. And then he fought, oh, Seb something. I forget his name, but he fought him to get. So he had, he held five different world titles. Well, not five different, but five world titles, but just not at different times. That makes sense. Three at different times and two at different times. I know what I'm trying to say. See, you can't even say the right thing in my own podcast. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking Mike Tyson. I want Mike Tyson to win. But I think it might be a bit of a farce. I don't really want to see him in the ring, to be honest with you. He's, he's earned his stripes now. I don't think he needs to... He, I mean, regardless of some of the legal matters that's happened, he, I guess he's just doing it for the money. Maybe it's a challenge. I don't know. I don't know. But I wish, I wish both of them well. I mean, getting punched in the face by Mike Tyson at any age is not going to be a good experience. Uh, okay, right. So Claire, <laughs> I got a bit caught up with that one. Sorry. Claire is saying, is Vinny getting a bit chubby? You know what? I've had a couple of people tell me that. And I'm not sure. To me, I don't think he is. But maybe he is. I don't know. It's really hard to tell. I mean, his, his back end, like his, his haunch, is it a haunch area? That seems to be a little bit bigger than it used to be. But I don't know what weight they're supposed to be. And he's little, isn't he? It's only a little thing, so... He's not ever going to be... I don't think he has the ability to be big. And I pick him up, he doesn't seem any heavier than he used to be. It's not like I'm not struggling to lift him anymore. Well, I shouldn't really. He's a little Jack Russell. I shouldn't have to struggle, but it just doesn't seem. And I look at him, but a neighbour said, oh, he's put weight on. He's fat now. I was like, okay, choose your words wisely. And portly. Portly's the word. Don't use the word fat. He's my little baby boy. No, he's like... And she hasn't seen him for a couple of weeks, so maybe he has put some weight on. I just... I don't notice it because I'm with him all the time. I really don't know. He he he's not eating anything extra to what he normally does. In fact, sometimes he doesn't eat hardly anything. He goes a day every every now and then. He goes a day where he, I hardly eats a thing. 
and he makes up for it the next day. Just goes through periods, you know. I don't think he's overweight. What I might do is, because uh, I tried to weigh him, because I've got scales in my bedroom, I tried to weigh him and he wouldn't sit still. And then someone pointed out that maybe I, if I held him, I just stood on the scales myself. Stales, scales myself. So I might do that. And, uh, but then he's going to weigh like 15, over 15 stone. I suppose you have to work out how much I weigh and then take that off, yeah. So I don't know what he is, probably a few kilos, six kilos? Apparently Archie's about six kilos. So I don't know what he would be. Maybe he's about the same, maybe he's a bit heavier. I don't know. I really don't know. He's got a lot of muscle in him. I mean, he's always pulling on his leads, so he's definitely got a strong neck, strong arms. I tell you what's weird though, Eric, because I'm going to end the recording now. As soon as I say the last little bit, he suddenly springs to life. Seriously. As soon as I say the, um, you know, the last thing I normally say on a recording, he suddenly springs to life and he's awake. So I'll tell you if it works this time. So that's the end of this recording anyway. Thank you for listening. And remember to be kind to yourself. Because you deserve to be happy. And be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye. No, <laughs> he didn't, he's not stirred at all, he's completely tired. He's fast asleep. Pick it up. Oh, yeah, there he is. Good boy, yes you are. Was you completely out of it, wasn't you? Completely out of it. Completely asleep. Oh, you want to go back to sleep? No, I'm getting up now. I'm getting up, baby boy. Come on. I'm getting up. I'm getting up now. Relax. In a more deep and meaningful way maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace. But also, I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended so that you can still benefit from listening to my voice Maybe in a few hours' time. Perhaps tomorrow. And then by listening regularly, especially if you find, like some people do, and myself as well, I, sometimes I'll find one particular recording that really 
resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. Every morning, every evening. There was this recording from going back to about 1999. It was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was. person's voice relaxed me. Just felt so peaceful. And I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, press the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation. And I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now, I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis. And long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006 but I knew I knew how helpful I found Being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. Knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing, if, if not more so each time you hear my voice. You may feel the same. Some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe 
people come back. Some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do, which you may not realize by listening, is when I record these recordings, now for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing, I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. And if I said focus on your hands and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze, even though they're may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands, I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. And when it comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing, I hear snoring and I think, I don't remember snoring, I remember talking, was it snoring or was a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. I 
And I can breathe into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel the easier your breathing becomes It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. This allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice ease in which you breathe so naturally Breathe so very easily and smoothly. my breathing improving when I've got my eyes closed I tend to visualize beautiful field with trees and flowers producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just taking some time on 
ของวัย from everything enjoying that feeling of peace serenity with a joyful heart seems to just drip by so very slowly so deeply peaceful completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment completely free Noticing that your mind has slowed down slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body drip in out of every part of your body and 
being released. from your brain and your mind slowly Muscles in your legs relax, relax. Pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders. Deepen in each part of your body. Further and deeper and deeper. In the feelings in the back of your neck, the feelings in your wrists Muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling. deeply and 
There's a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Focus on your mind. Your mind becomes even slower. Very slow. Your stomach. in your stomach. Your back. Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Deeply relaxed.
letting those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. shins and your calf muscles, Feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body. Tips of your toes to your eyes, your fingers. all the way to your lower back. And letting go. Really letting go. Drifting. Mind. Just wandering away. Happy to let go. So tranquil, your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even more
とLetting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body. to notice your forehead and your eyes So loose. Noticing a sense of 
complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Peaceful energy. have noticed your mind drifting Peaceful. Blissful peace. Blissful peace.
Thank you. body body feels almost invisible. you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed 
even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body and your mind starts to slow down and that could be almost in recognition of I guess my speech not being particularly fast and things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body it's almost as if the parts of your body just open up allowing the negativity out and at the same time replacing that negativity with positive healing energy which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort and all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes maybe half an hour however long you want it to be to just rest and allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation calmness which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice 
to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body, you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. Just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing. Completely moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing. Focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling more. in on your neck, the 
front of your neck and your throat. Relax in and loose and calm. The sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. in on the back of your neck, letting go of any tension that may have been there before, and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release. experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. down to your lower back, and as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. As those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back, the top of your back, the middle and your lower back. And as you scan Gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser. The muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. spreads into your hips, so down your lower back and into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area, start to melt, start to really let go, and you know we're about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine. Continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, and 
as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already feeling really loose. Those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle, so smooth. Feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders. That sense of relaxation, not just traveling deeply into your muscles. Also relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms. Healing you feel so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders, which sends that deep healing message. your arms, and you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there, because they're so relaxed, so spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows, including your elbows, circumference spread forearms and your wrists, feeling so heavy, yet at the same time, so 
so light and gentle. Focusing now on your hands, sense of real peace it just seems to feel so familiar tips to 
muscles in your thighs. Your knees. So relaxed. Muscles and your shins completely
start counting down now from 20 down to 1 you can imagine in a way it's like just walking down some steps and each step all 20 steps and each step represents a level of comfort Each step represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Twenty. Eighteen. Seventeen.
sustain. Fourteen. Thirteen.
six.
as you focus on your eyes. I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, that whole area that makes up your eye. And as we count down from ten, to focus in on your eyes. You'll become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. And you may find sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that now focus in on your eyes I'm going to begin counting down from ten to one right now ten
cuerpo. So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like you 
you're counting down from 10 to 1. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy? Just because you're counting down? You could try it again. But this time, I'll go a bit slower. This time, I do focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs. Just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. With every number that I count down. Ten. Seven, six, five, four. just notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1 it's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down and just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. Allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. The gap. 
gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and the tension falls into the gap. gives you that distance, that space, now, ten, nine, Seven, six, Three. How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on the legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focus in on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. And then 
goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may, it may seem, sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC a bit of love shown a bit of acknowledgement a thank you gratitude for what our thighs do for us And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something. Well, it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise, I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. You move down to your knees, gain such an important part. And I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing. That's possibly not appreciated until... It's temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. you can still have that attention on your thighs maybe notice how your thighs feel maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply and as you focus now bottoms of your legs, your shins, 
and your calf muscles, the bones between your knees and your feet, incorporating of course your ankles, so important. head even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted and it's kind of strange in a way when you think that you know logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms which is okay doesn't can't see any problem with that if we're just picking stuff up but our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs and from a physics perspective or logical even it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles then leading to your feet that thin area thin bone yet it does so much great work supports us, supports our body for a lifetime Helps us to balance, helps you to get around and be mobile. And there's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles, they didn't seem to do anything. Like, okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins. They're to protect your lower legs. shaped in a way almost as a protector of the bone leading of course to your ankles and your feet but we're not going to focus on your feet we're just going to focus on the legs I realise that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness. Even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. You've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. Almost that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations of course there's the muscles the big strong muscles that we have in our thighs but the skin on the outside of the thighs as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. You could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees, and of course there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost it's like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. fold in between your legs, you can just massage with your fingertips, imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue, you can of course feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. doing the same for my shins, massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way, because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are, because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, 
the idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs, massage the muscles and the bones and to get your fingers deep in there releasing all tension just to show how much you care about your legs how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly your knees your calves your ankles the strength of your ankles considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs especially your thighs yet they're so strong so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are truly a gift because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight, regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, still a lot of weight for these little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone, double that. Yet my ankles support my body all the time. Although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down. As in fact my whole legs do. My feet. Feet also go. And my toes clap. I'm so happy. legs really are amazing and I know that talk, uh, talking about your legs is probably possibly the, one of the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say possibly but boring or not everything I said is true your legs are amazing. Your legs deserve not just respect. They deserve to relax deeply. deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely your legs really can relax and because the legs are so such a most you know a very important part of your body when you relax your legs the rest of your body also naturally follows in that journey 
city of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. But it's almost as if the muscles are just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. down from 10 down to 1 and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed 10 9 8 7 So I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represents you feeling karma not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. And as you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as your body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax. And a more 
your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end, the deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing each.
each muscle in your body. Effortlessly. And just observing the sensation of letting go. This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number you hear me say. Naturally feeling slow and peaceful six Two. slowed right down sink in deeply into relaxation As you focus on your mind, you may notice that there are 
there's some thoughts still there. Maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. So what you can do is send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love little petals from a flower, you just sprinkle it over them, petals filled with love towards those thoughts, to let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down slow down, quiet down, for now. So as you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude over those thoughts. Which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply. every number those thoughts will become more and more relaxed starting with number seven
changing now. Notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. I'm going to focus on your hands. Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. you focus on your hands and your fingers there's nothing needed to be done there's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that it's just noticing Focusing on your hands. Noticing how they feel. Because the more your hands feel, the calmer your mind feels, and the more comfort you feel throughout your body. Noticed that your mind is starting to drift. Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation. number from eight down to one you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your hands Drift. 
Dinner game. Starting with number eight. Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. And everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worrying and overthinking and 
anxiety, tension. Just generally thinking about stuff. When you take that away, which is what we do, what we do now. real sense of peacefulness which comes to you very quickly because ultimately it's just a feeling a feeling of comfort it's almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful, a place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort, a place where you can be you. Accept yourself for who you are. A place where you're not trying to please anybody else, ever. A place where you can actually not just love yourself, but in some ways, more importantly, you can like yourself, appreciate who you are, and that sense of gratitude is in the air all around you, also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. Healing energy soaking into your body. healing energy spreads through your veins, traveling to each and every single part of your body. And you start to realize that actually that healing energy it's not just entered into your brain. It's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing, relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel, not just now, but tomorrow and the next day as your health improves. Not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things 
things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer have the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before as you realize that you're the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy Noticing these natural developments of healing, continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life and you know that you were born as we all were with the ability to fall asleep naturally we were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to even stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep. The deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep, but it's our birthright, it's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, Perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. It's 
very, very easy to let go. Because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. And when you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive positive way, opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions that can have such an amazing effect on how you feel right now, as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within you continue to flourish and grow, transforming your life in a positive, beautiful way, allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. And this feeling, this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, This feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed. And it's not that you're thinking slower. It's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity. Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. You can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity will 
turn around and leave you alone. Stop. And that negativity would disappear. as you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm with all that healing spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned, it's barred, it's not allowed entry. Doesn't doesn't des doesn't deserve to be here, doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. Feels nice, doesn't it? To just let go of everything. And I'm going to count down now from twenty down to one. Continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep. With every number, you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now, twenty. Nine, 
Empty. This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. To give yourself permission to take a break from everything. And you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind. Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those parts that you focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, 
it's kind of expected. You expect, when you listen to my voice, to feel more relaxed, naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body. focus increases which actually calms your mind and when your mind calms down body relaxes. And when your body calms down, your mind relaxes. started to focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension. of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs inside your body, all of the muscles, all of the fat, all of everything, every hair on your body is filled with feeling of comfort, of relaxation, increases. Deeply increases. In a way that starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy, because it's not needed, and it may start to drift, That's what's needed. So if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation, that's what you'll get. If what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts, that's also will happen. OK, 
is by pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, I give permission to my body and my mind. In fact, I give the command to your body and drift off to sleep, if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, Focusing on a different part of your body. And you may find yourself drifting. But you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting. And get you alert again to my voice focusing on different part of your body starts to relax even deeper, because that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone. sleep, and that's the last you remember until you wake up, in your own time, when you experience the right amount of sleep for you, because when you do, and if you do, sleep, it's extremely pleasant, 
let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focusing on your fingers. Maybe you could move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. Both hands. And even though as you focus on both of your hands now, they may seem to just melt into one. Where does your right hand start and your left hand end? Almost as if it was mixed together. Now focusing on your knees. Just noticing how your knees feel. Focusing on your elbows. Focusing in on both of your elbows. Just observing the feeling of your elbows. sensations in your ankles.
descendo. Letting go. Letting go. Letting go of everything. Letting go. Letting go of everything. Everything. I'm going to start now. And I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table, lying on your front, your head is supported, your arms are supported, and you feel comfortable, and the breathing is really easy, and you feel... You feel confident in how you look as well. So there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session. So none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, and with my hands to the side of your head, not pressing but just Holding there very gently. Maybe over your ears. And a little bit on your face. Just so you can feel my hands. So you can become accustomed to them. And now put my hands on the back of your head again. And gently... Let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can 
feel my hands. Gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realise that you're safe and it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands. Now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and as I massage the sides of your neck gently Moving from the bottom of your neck, which would be sort of near where your shoulders start, I guess, all the way up to your jaw, your ears kind of area, that side of your neck. Of course, is a lot longer than the front of your neck. Massaging the, the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. I mean, this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders. From the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow my knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them. All the time being firm yet gentle with you. And just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders. 
move into the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table, just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. This is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, kneading, if if you wish, to really release the tension, to really get into those muscles and let your fingers in there. And make you feel really nice. Sometimes it's just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly. It can all be beneficial to the relaxation. Of the muscles in your shoulders. Now as we move down your arms, we do one arm at a time, starting with your right arm. What I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up, just hold it to the side of you. I don't want it to still be attached. And I just massage the tops of your arms. All the way down into your forearms, into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside. It's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Just holding your hand in both of my hands. Just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching the fingers ever so lightly. At the same time, Pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hand. Just turning the hand gently. Stretching it gently. Actually having your hand held can really be 
an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. feel safe. And as I put that right arm back down where it was, I'm going to do the same with your left arm. Exactly the same. Massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. Massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. So comforting. Now just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back biggest part of your body, starting at the top, starting again where we've already been, that area at the top, in between your shoulders, near your neck, going back, massaging that area again, but this time moving down. a downward stroke to the middle of your back, working from the outside inwards, so massaging the, your back but the, the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against, almost the part that connects your front to your back, and just massaging down firmly but gently as firm as you want, moving down and then moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again, being very gentle, yet firm as you choose. Eventually you get to the spine. You can massage the muscles on either side of your spine from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back. You can 
you do that a few times. Sometimes people use the knuckle or the, you know, two fingers and just go either side of the spine. Almost just push down, go all the way down to the bottom of the spine. Each time releasing tension and opening up the body, stretching the body so that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated. to one side, to your right side, and from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, you're going to massage that area of your back, I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently and massage and push from one end that side all the way to my side, or to the middle in fact, to where your spine is, massaging that side of your spine, the opposite side to where I'm standing, it's almost like kneading bread, there's that big area which is firm, yet lots there to massage, Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it. You really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged. It releases so much from your body that's not useful. Starting a healing process which will continue long after this recording is over. And massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part of your lower back kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. It feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're in your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now I'm going to move, or we'll move further up to your top of your body, and I'm going to do the same. This time, starting 
with your upper back, put my hands forward over and massage massaging that area up to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area, the muscle tissue, uh, or whatever, fatty tissue even, will be possibly from your chest. So it's all connected, the chest and the back connect together. I'm going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue with the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing. as gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I'll move off the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from Pretty much underneath your arm area, really. To your spine. And then continuing that all the way down, including your lower, your middle of your back. going to go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs, starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. But that's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint very sensitive, gentle area. Then working down to your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose. Using both hands, Fingers digging deep. To your ankles. In the back of your, back of your ankles. Just gently massage in that area. Maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit. Moving to the right foot. Massaging the bottom of your feet. the sides of your feet, just 
gently but firm enough so they don't tickle. And just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you. As I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, the sides, your arches, your heel, you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing, yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle. Stretching your toes gently and massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers, each one individually. And moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting with the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area, working all the way down. This is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I spend more time on one particular area. As you move down your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently, moving down your ankle and to your feet, massaging backs of your feet, bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience when you're having your feet massaged, feels really good. Turn over in your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again at your neck area. In your shoulders. Just to Get back in touch with that area. As you move up. I can clean my hands. Make them all fresh. Because now I'm going to massage your face. Gently. Starting off with your forehead, if your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. And 
just massage in around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck, chin. moving down from your neck down to your chest, starting by massaging the very top of your chest, where the collarbone is, either side of the collarbone. Just massaging the whole of the chest. Moving the chest around. Because it's quite a large area, you can move from one side to the next. Moving my hands underneath pretty much where your arms are, stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process. Moving up over your chest. Just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart, just massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down. just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel completely relaxed. So we're going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention, but feels really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, or just below your arms. All the way down to your hips. Now moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. And we're going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side. Gently massaging from one side to the next, moving that whole area from below your 
ribs all the way down to below your belly button. to the other side of you and repeat that process of relaxing deeply calmly you feel loose you feel free and something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part because we do have a tendency of holding a different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of as I now massage your stomach the front of your stomach making circles around your belly button then going the other way around there's a gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling As I now move down the tops of your thighs, your muscles, massaging them. And I can do this with two legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, in the front of your thighs. down to your knees, gently massaging your knees, sliding down your shins, putting pressure on either side of your shin, gently, softly, but firmly, moving down to your ankles, Stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot in each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the foot. The top, the bottom, your heel, your ankle, your toes. Massaging every part of your feet. Feels so good just to let go. Enjoy the process. Enjoy. Feeling. So deeply relaxed. comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin and you can just lie there for as long as you choose Enjoying the feeling of deep comfort from being massaged by me. Enjoy the feeling.
do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred candles. And you're going to blow each one out individually, one by one. Starting at a hundred as I count down. All the way down to one. And each time I say a number. You can imagine that candle in front of you. I'd like you to actually physically gently blow that candle out. Just so it's not a big blow, it's just a gentle and that candle will extinguish and then I'll say the next number as we move down and you can just blow that one out as well and as we move down the numbers find yourself feeling more and more relaxed if you need to sleep you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy in fact you may struggle to blow out all 100 of these candles as you feel more and more deeply relaxed to me after a while and even though there may be background sounds where you are you be aware of those sounds at the moment just not even notice them at all because they're unimportant where I am I've got the sounds of the birds Horace the pigeon, 
likes to say hello sometimes. And there's your plane that goes by. There'll be traffic and trains in the distance. But none of that seems important whatsoever. say and then you blow that candle out too so easy so simple going to start by introducing the first candle, which is a hundred. a slight change in how you feel. As well as a real sense of positivity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness expanding starting with one hundred blow out that candle now. Candle ninety. 
No.
Do 
22.
Ten.
let go of all of those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed. Allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down. And it's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply. And because you've made that decision, your body will just follow suit. Because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax. Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. And when you do give your permission and you give the say so and you can say, okay, it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally. Your body just follows. It's all like a breath of relief. Ah, oh, good, I can now relax. That feeling at the end of a day, of a very physical day that you may experience in the past, where you get home and you just sit down on a chair, maybe you kick your shoes off and oh, it feels so nice. Knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least. And if you choose, you can just sit there for maybe an hour or two. And it feels blissful. And just by sitting down like that, your body knows that it's time to relax. Your body has been given permission from you because it's a mindset and your mind you're prepared to let go of everything and to just completely allow all of the stress of your body to evaporate and it 
tensions can just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in the body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax. It may seem almost alien. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world to let go completely, to relax totally. The most natural thing in the world to allow yourself to feel really calm in your mind. And it is almost like a literal unwinding. It's like you press a button and all the tension just releases. And it's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of a clock just unwinding. It's almost like you could see the the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you'd use to wind it up. All the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As the sense of relaxation becomes stronger and deeper. And you may find that the more relaxed you feel, that your mind starts to wander. Maybe you seem to stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realize you're listening to me again and that was just your mind drifting to sleep which is quite natural because sometimes when we're stressed and tense we not may not actually be aware of what we need, what we physically or emotionally need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, ideas, all touch with the feelings of such relaxation. It's, it feels so nice to be in touch with the calmness of the different body parts as they become looser and looser. seems easier and more natural and effortless as that cool of air enters through your mouth or nose into your lungs breathing in comfort 
some relaxation. And then just breathing out any excess remaining tension and stress from every part of your body. you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things uh, have come to a standstill, or maybe just much, much slower than before, because your mind is not really needed when listening to my voice. Which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body. And that synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and the relaxation of your mind lets you know that feeling completely calm, loose and relaxed, really is a great healing experience for you, and it has so many positive benefits for your body, your mind and your life, to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind, even your bones are relaxed. Muscles are relaxed. Even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. Every hair that you have feels so. starts to feel the benefit of this healing relaxation. And as you focus on the inside of your scalp where your brain is, you can start to realize and notice to relax, he sends those messages to the rest of your body and your mind to really relax even more deeply. because they're no longer necessary in this moment, in this moment of deep relaxation and calmness, filling
your brain. ever-increasing sensations of comfort that are spreading throughout your body. Relaxing each and every muscle of your body. and calm, so very, very peaceful in every part of your body, letting go of So 
do a body scan, focusing on firstly how you feel in your body, not trying to change how you feel, not trying to relax, not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension, but just accepting, observing and accepting how you feel in the different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, to notice, to get in touch with how you actually feel in this moment. So I'm going to start off in on your hands. Just be aware of your hands. I'd like you to move your hands around. Just maybe move your fingers a little bit. Opening and closing your hands very gently. Just so that you touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. And a very, very slow movements. Focusing now. you can just be kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands, maybe turning your ankles, moving your feet around, moving your toes gently, but only very gently and very slowly. Noticing how your feet feel in this moment. Focusing now on your eyes. I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes. The muscle changes in your eyes when you do close them. Maybe raising your eyebrows as it stretches the tops of your eyes. Perhaps squinting your eyes. scrunching up your eyes, just so you can really get in touch with all aspects of how your eyes feel right now. Now focus in on your thighs. I'm going to just ask you to gently tense your thighs, just very, very gently, just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs, and noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now. to the back of your neck, 
just noticing the back of your neck, the muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, which lead to your shoulders, so as you focus on the back of your neck, you're looking up, maybe moving your head down as if you were looking down, perhaps moving your head side to side, right to left, but only very slowly and very gently, not trying to force anything, it has to be very, very gentle, just so that you can be more in touch with the feelings, with the sensations, the physical sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now. And as we now focus on the tops of your arms, the parts where your biceps and your triceps are, between your elbow and your shoulders, as you focus on those parts, the tops of your arms, you may like to just tense them, but very, very gently and slowly, so you're not straining or putting any pressure whatsoever on your arms, it's just so that you can gain more of a sense of how your upper arms are feeling in this moment. Noticing as you gently, very gently and slowly tighten the muscles and then let go. Notice how the tops of your arms feel. stomach, the area, the lower abdomen area below your belly button, moving all the way down to your hips, just above your groin. Maybe you're able to tense these muscles area very, very gently and slowly. If that is a difficult thing to do, maybe you can just move your body, pushing your stomach up side using your hips just so that you can get more in tune with how your lower abdomen area is feeling in this moment 
physical sensations of the lower abdomen. And as you move your attention Noticing your lips and inside your mouth, your teeth, your gums, your tongue. Just noticing. it gently against the side of your mouth and then to the right gently to the side of your mouth perhaps pressing up against the, the top of your mouth and then down gently against the bottom of your mouth always very slowly and very, very gentle so that you can be aware of how you feel to maybe just rotate your wrists by moving your hands in a circular motion very gently and slowly just so that you can sensations that you are currently experiencing in your wrists, perhaps moving your hands up and down, and again just above your hips, where your coccyx are, and a whole 
which also really does include the sides of the body, because those muscles are very much connected. As those muscles also move into your hip area, connecting to your buttocks, the sides of your hips, and if you're physically able to do so, physical sensations of your lower back. As you now move to your attention. just, if it's okay to do so, gently open your mouth, not wide and then stretching, just very gently and slowly open your mouth and closing your area, and you don't need to do anything to move your chest, because it moves every time you breathe, and it moves very gently. 
muscles in those bones in your midsection Noticing how your hips feel right now. You can very, very gently move your hips. Everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant, but just gradually starting to, it's almost like time is stretching, but it's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. Very 
small movements which make up the larger movements, which is always the case. So when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other and what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements. Starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm. I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. Starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations. whether pleasurable or not. And maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings, and just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral. Just feelings. Not being particularly concerned, but just noticing what your body is telling you. The feelings in your arms. Instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings, all those different muscles and the skin, the hairs of your arms, the, all the internal parts of your arms, the veins. Just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling. Maybe your left wrist also has its own individual physical sensation. about your forearm and your right arm. Your right forearm there may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to. It may not feel like anything other than just 
a feeling that it's there. feelings in your shoulders, perhaps your shoulders when you think about them, kind of almost like they're the same, you know, the same feeling, almost like your, both of your shoulders are just one thing, but of course they're not. Focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder. Maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, maybe tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference in each shoulder. side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. And of course that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of the back. sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and then I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched, very gently, but just stretched a little bit. Even though I wasn't doing anything to try to stretch the lower back, it just seemed to happen. The feeling of very gently stretching your lower back. along that feeling in your chest just noticing what sensations you experiencing in your chest right now. And there's so much of the chest. Obviously there's the collarbone leading to a chest. You've got the chest bone. You've got the muscles in your chest. And of course, if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, well, mine aren't that different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest. But at the side, underneath, it's pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back, as well as breast tissue that stretches 
and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. feeling there is in your chest. Why notice that I focus on my chest? I feel it in my my back, my upper back. I guess the obvious reason would be because, you know, I'm breathing. In. And it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. And it feels... It feels okay. a little bit of pain in my right chest a little bit not pain but a little discomfort maybe stiffness possibly I don't know I notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason that's probably part of my upper back that connection between my shoulders and my upper back because I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back moving the shoulders backwards or up which then moves the I think it's the scapulas your back feels quite nice actually the good thing about this is you can if you want to you can just flex or Stimulate the various muscles in your body gently in order to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, tense a muscle and you let it go and you let it relax it relaxes way more than it would normally and you have to feel that you're able to do that there's no point doing it if there's a, uh, an issue with a per part of your body, you need to be gentle with yourself at all times when relaxing deeply. It's important to be kind to yourself. your mind how much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording Peace. 
peaceful is your mind right now? With nothing to think about and just my voice to listen to because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation at the very least for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning at the very least for your mind to slow down as your body continues to relax Because that's what you want to happen. That's what you expect to happen. The relaxation. body maybe calming your mind to the point of boredom when you start maybe to drift away drifting it's almost as if you are moving further away from your body and your mind, just leaving that there. Kind of like an, an escape pod in a spaceship, like a movie space movie, you know, when they get into that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship.
focusing on your breathing. listening to my voice because your mind started to imagine something different maybe started to almost move into some kind of a dreaming state on my voice, you may also wish to allow your mind to just drift naturally into that space of comfort and safety. body like a warm blanket covering you gently keeping your body at just the perfect temperature seem to matter anymore. There's that sense of peace spreads through your mind. Like a gentle breeze strong enough to blow away all negativity, strong enough to remove from your mind any anxiety and stress that was there before. that is filling your body and your mind. you felt 
the same mind. I count down from ten down to one and each number you hear your mind will become seeing light now. Just a slight movement from nine down to eight. Just another small change in how you feel. Eight down to seven. That feeling is like a gap it starts to get wider the gap between those feelings that you used to have in your mind compared to the feelings you have that are growing now feelings of comfort and security Seven, seven down to six. When you get to five, your mind will start to have a certain physical sensation. Almost like there's a magnet outside of your head sucking tension and the stress and any remaining feelings that you don't want, sucking them out through your skull. When you're down to four, you can start to really experience that sense of not just emptiness, but space. A place full of fresh air. A place where you can stretch. It's almost as if as you go down to four and three, your mind is expanding with this sense to one, your mind just feels exactly how you want to feel, almost a perfect feeling, maybe a, a sensation place that's safe where nothing can affect you at all. And you can stay in that, that space of comfort and confidence in your own ability to create this space and this feeling of comfort within your own mind just by counting from 10 down to 1. 
this is something that you can do yourself in your own mind. A time when you can maybe sit down, maybe just for a few minutes. Close your eyes. Just count. feelings in your mind. And when you feel that way in your mind, your body copies your mind. And that feeling is spread through your spine system into every part of your body, travels through your bloodstream, healing and relaxing every part of your little existence. practice this a few times before the end of the recording and then you can practice on your own each time you count from 10 down to 1 the feelings of comfort calmness and Deep relaxation becomes stronger and deeper. Filling your mind and brain with these positive chemicals that spread throughout your body, relaxing you. and mind so many many years ago just by counting from ten down to one so we're going to do it now I'm going to count from ten down to one you to repeat the number after me. So when I say 10, you can just repeat to yourself, 10. Just notice, be aware of how you feel. say nine, you can repeat to yourself, nine, again, noticing the increase in comfort and calmness in your saying when I say eight, when I say seven, six, when I say five, four, when I say three, Say when I 
also one necessary for you so that you can adapt so that you feel you want to say the numbers 10 right at you faster than I do then go ahead and do that or if you feel you want to do it yourself then you'd like to have more more space between the numbers maybe take a lot longer to get from 10 all the way down to 1 that's your choice also to do to one that will be the end of this recording unless of course you're listening with music and the music will continue
Ganze. Noticing how you physically feel, having counted down from 20 to 1, allowing stress and tension to leave through your fingertips and your toes. And as you focus on your fingertips, maybe they feel a little bit tingly, which is just for understanding signal the tension you're feeling exiting your body and through your fingertips. So now we're going to count from 20 down to 1 again, this time you're going to feel a relief of tension and stress and the anxiety that you may have. Almost as if it's just releasing the whole of your stomach from the navel to just above your chest or below your chest area. So surrounding your belly button area and the whole area, you can feel the tension of your body, whatever's left, just releasing from that area. And you may notice that your stomach will become
Philippines, three books of Hakim Khalil's and for this very thing I was sent. This might just be the start of things. You might just make your first just this little scan of your body. This might just sound like a little thing. Your first just saw your upper body listening to this recording will feel so right to let go completely of everything that you left and you feel so nice neutral calm and at ease in your body just like that you can feel to let your eyes and just focus as well on your forehead and your eyes just like how they're all in front of you almost as if you were wearing a mask you know like a like a Batman mask or something or <laughs> Zorro or something you know the kind of mask that covers your eyes but also covers quite a lot of the forehead focusing on that area because that's the area that you might want to release tension or stress from your mind from your brain or from your mind and any tension that you may have remaining in your face in your neck in your jaw in your eyes in your forehead in your own scalp there needs to be any tension within your head from that Including your mind, everything in it. And that's going to be released through your forehead and your eyes. As I count down here from 20 down to 1.
Augusta in Florida and uh, Maine in the same month, the next to each other. So I can see Moose and Tom right there. Now how easy is it all? But Moose is just so much fun. so much preparation I'm looking at a man eyes wide and eyes close and watchful and stress as well and waiting with my eyes wide open my brother and I in the front and this physically and mentally grow more and more health prosper and mindful feel 
yourself so nice to just let go. To give yourself some space. I'd like you to make up your mind who you're going to relate to. And I want to explore that with you, what it feels like when you actually decide who you're going to relate to. Not forcing yourself, but giving yourself that, I guess it is a command really, isn't it, when you're telling yourself, relax, with a gentle but firm word that only you can really tell yourself in that way, but you can't have someone else saying to you, no, relax, relax. It needs to be gentle, but you can't. Someone else can't really have the same, the same kind of influence or power that you have over your own physicality, over how you feel. Because when you say. test it out. You can do little tests, do little tests along the way and you can get more of an idea of the force, the positive force that you can have in creating a sense of comfort and relaxation in your body and your mind. How quickly just by you telling yourself So I want to 
just start by just, just focus on your hairs. So focus on your hairs and just tell your hairs to relax. So just say relax as you focus on your hairs. You could say my hands are relaxed or I want my hands to relax. But I think if you actually do it directly focusing and imagining that your hands can hear the sound now that they've got little ears you can hear them now so talking to your hands and just say relax Focus on your eyes and tell your eyes to relax. So you're just saying the same word, relax. Now find the right tone for you. So now I might say relax. So you you might say relax or relax. So you know you, you might say it differently to yourself. That's important for you to gauge what feels right for you. So just tell your eyes to relax whilst focusing on your eyes, your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyebrows. And just tell your eyes directly, relax. Just give that massage a pause. Sometimes you may feel that you need a bit more time for the different parts to relax. You know, because I start talking by maybe one part doesn't relax fully. So what will happen is that you just need time to relax even there. I noticed is when I started focusing on my eyes they actually almost became or got worse before they got better in a way or that I felt a degree of tension growing in my eyes and then disappearing so I think what that was really was just me becoming more aware of the tension that was already there focused on it before but I wasn't really acknowledging it or um, really conscious to those feelings now my eyes are still continuing to relax as well as my hands actually Hands have got a certain kind of movement, not not buzzing, but a kind of extreme degree of energy in my hands. Maybe that's where the tension is being released. Maybe that's causing that. focus on the back of the neck that's a part that's quite often um, well for me I was tension I don't know about for yourself but I think it's quite a, a standard place where tension may sometimes grow so and I'm, I'm 
doing this exactly what you would do as you do with a friend someone telling their body parts where to go so if you tell your neck the back of your neck focus on the back of your neck and just say focusing and you're saying it literally to the back of your neck as if the back of your neck can actually hear what you're saying. If you do that now, just say it to your ears, to the back of your neck, and they'll do the same. focusing on the back of your neck. Other parts start to I don't know, show themselves to me or maybe I don't want to be negative as well, but I started noticing that the feelings in my shoulders, tension in my shoulders and in my upper back. Whether that was because saying I need to get my neck back up it's the other parts that are really tension but my lower my, my back and my neck are still relaxing but I've just become more aware of other parts that are needing attention and this might have happened when it's not done any wrong it just means you're being notified of more places that are also needing to be healed so I'm going to focus on my upper back so you can do the same even if you don't have any uh, feelings of tension that are obvious in your upper back focus on your back and the whole area from your shoulder blades down to your upper back and your spine and your ribs and other parts of your, your body and that's the parts that are really that need to be given more of a rest swear it happens a lot and this often happens at the time of birth at 16 years or something I mean I've been I don't want to surprise but I know I've been in pain I can even feel it and focusing on the back of my neck my upper back is See, when I started talking a while ago to my upper back and talking about how it wanted to ask the upper back for help, my upper back already started to relax. It's almost as if it doesn't need to hear the words, it just needs attention. something that often happens in this type of situation is when you start to relax, different parts of your 
the brother says that this this madness that he just saw in this kid this Alan Moore this stark magnificent overpowered psychopathic stark just delusion this crazy this Yeah. 